I was on the block selling crackery. You know what I mean? Getting my money on the streets. A man came to me like, listen, I have a way that you can make money more legally and not get in trouble for it. He gave me 10 CDs. I made $150 over 10 CDs. After that, I was like, cool. Here, yeah, take one, Prince. My music, big guy. Here, yeah, take one, beautiful family. My music. Where you from? Brazil? Spain? Montreal? Love the swag of Tom Cruise. Where you from, man? Where you from? Where you from, big guy? It's just music, man. I'm from 182nd and t in the Bronx, you know, the Fordham section. I've been selling C CDs for like three years now. It's fast money, but it's not the same as drug money, but you know, it's still, you're still your own boss. You know, you get to go home whenever you want. The, the presence of, you know, the hard copy, actually going out there has is, is been lost, like in the music industry. So we're trying to give it back to like that bad boy days when, you know, Puff Daddy was, you know, he, they was outside the street promotion team handing them out. It's sort of like that. I think a lot of guys, and just people in general, are scared to promote their stuff on the subways because one, you can get arrested, two, you have a higher level of rejection than you'll ever deal with, and you have to perform your work. Basically what we're about to do is you see all the homies are about to get on the four or five train and we're gonna go perform. It's been a minute since I spoke about my journey, had to keep my ear to the streets, can let the blocks learn me. I was um, in Jacksonville, Florida, and I graduated high school after like living there for two years, and my mom just wanted me to get out. It was just really bad there, and uh, she was like, I don't care what you do, I just need you to leave. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. I first started selling CDs um, in 2010. I was living in a youth shelter called The Covenant House. I was performing poetry on the subway trains, which like totally sucked, man, and uh, it just wasn't working. But when you're like hustling on the street, if you have like CDs and like they've seen your live performance and you sell merch, it's like ridiculous how much you yeah, receive from it. Good. Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, what's up, y'all? Some of you seen me before, some maybe not. I mean, I can see, I get on here all the time, kicking raps, when I build my confidence, to the sad of trouble, to the make a living. I'm in and take you briefly, like, and you hear all this in it. You don't like rap music or poetry, but for you to me out. You get right to like this, all right? Life in NYC is I'm rapping, it's on the beat. Hello to everyone I see next to we leave 125th Street. Gotta put in work until the day I'm in that dirt. Got my mental cooking and my pencil pushing. He's rapping on the fire, cause it's better than central booking. This right here is double fun, so I gotta double funds. What's the goal to not get popped just like this woman's bubble gum? And much love to the MTA worker for not reporting me. Next stop on this four train, still 86th Street. Hey, Cops harass us all the time for no reason. All we're doing is putting out our music. We're not out here harassing anybody, you know? I mean, it may be a few people that may do things they shouldn't, but we already get them off. We, we as ourselves, we get them off of the block. We're like, tell them, get out of here, you know what I mean? Charge is usually aggressive panhandling mostly and ro maybe robbery if somebody comes back and says they didn't feel comfortable in the situation. I've been arrested twice. The other time they just gave me a ticket. It was like, you know, don't, don't do it no more and stuff like that. You need a license and stuff, you know. When I got locked, incarcerated for it, you know, the judge is like, what, what charge is this? Like, hey, you know, R&R, &R, just let me go. Cause I was like, he was like, that's expressing his, expressing his art, you know? Soliciting, loitering, panhandling, blocking space. I got a ticket for blocking space, but them shits add up. Yeah. Sometimes you get in a car too, and you can feel that them shits is not love. You just know, you're just like, should I even do it? But then sometimes when you do those, that's like you like a $20 bill. My theory is like, you can't underestimate or just put profile people like, oh, I'm gonna go to this guy. He's gonna be the one that, you know, shows love. You gotta go to everybody. That's the whole point. You gotta go to everybody. I don't care if you're white, you're Italian, you know, you're black, Asian, it don't matter. I feel good. Like every day, I get, I, when I sell CDs, I get a Twitter or, a, or Instagram message saying, I just bought your CD, I listen to your shit, your shit is hot. I feel great about it, you know what I mean? So, it's always a good look. Whatever they like, I'm glad they like it, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad they liking what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying?
The minimum is at least $150. That's the minimum. I, you know, it's times that I made $300, $400. It's guys that I know out here that make $800, $900, you know? So it, it all depends on your, your drive and your hustle. You know, if you put it in your mind, I'm gonna make this quota and I'm not leaving until I have that quota, you're gonna make it. Because everything you do is, is all in the mind. You just gotta live it out, that's all. There's still nothing like the old school aspect of physically doing guerrilla marketing. It's just not gonna die. No matter how much the digital game grows, it would be better for artists to be well-versed in both. Consistency is key at the end of the day. I just feel like you, I'll move way more units physically than somebody would necessarily trying to like pump you to buy the album online for $5.99. Get it from me on the cheap, from the low.